There's the interesting theme I felt like that's happened this morning a bit about listening to young people. I'm hearing about that. Um, and possibly that young people can change us or we can be changed or we can go learning together, which is good because that's what I'm talking about. Um, firstly, um, I thought I would do a little bit of my context too. Um, this is the view from the back of my house. Um, I live in a vicarage. I'm not a vicar. My wife is, so I'm there legitimately. Um, <laughs> not, not just like s squatting. Um, this is Albion Square at the back of our house. Uh, you can see there they've got like some of these like basements with glass, you know, townhouses. Albion Square is a conservation area. They have a residence association. They are um, very active. Um, these trees, they kind of go around the outside of the church. The church is just over here. Um, the trees were cut down, or not cut down, chopped back. Um, uh, a few a month or so ago, um, the only complaints that we had, uh, or that the PCC had, were from Albion Square Conservation Society, of course. Um, they uh, were very concerned that chopping the trees down would mean that they would see the other side of our house, which uh, is this view. So there's the trees. Albion Square is that way. This is the other side, social housing. Um, they were concerned that they would see the social housing. Actually, out loud, they said that. Um, <laughs> and wrote a letter, or have it in writing. Um, in one of these flats uh, is George. George uh, lives with his sister. He works for Tower Hammers Council uh, in refuse collection. He works seven days a week. He sends money back home to Nigeria. His sister's a nurse. He's got a neighbour called Frank, and I met Frank outside just the other side of this, this block um, by the shops. Um, Frank s sits outside the shops most days. Um, he's clearly drinking. He nips in and out of the bookies all the time. Um, he's clearly got a story. I'm yet to find out more about his story, but I'm interested in his story. Um, <clears throat> the other side of Albion Square is my daughter's boyfriend's house. My daughter is six. <laughs> she actually went to Legoland with him yesterday. Eek. Um, we're not going to call him a boyfriend anymore because it's awkward. Um, his dad works in uh, film... Production. He edits films. Um, he does CGI, um, so he does all the special effects. Uh, he's based in London in Soho, uh, but two nights a week he works overnight from home, just the other side there, managing editing in Singapore because the whole um, idea of editing a film is to get it done really quickly. And, and if you can do editing 24 hours a day, then you can get the films made quicker. So what you do is you have an office in London, you have an office in Singapore, and you get your manager in London to manage Singapore editing films overnight. This is what happens. So he does that from just the other side of um, Albion Square. His wife has her business at home. She makes vegan cakes. Um, Cake or Death is her name of her company, which I think is quite good. Um, and she sells her cakes um, to markets in East London, obviously. So, the world is on our street. The world is in our church. On Easter Sunday, we had a brunch after church. We had food from Jamaica, Nigeria, Ghana, the UK, Montserrat, and all washed down with Easter eggs and rum punch. The world is really on our street. It's in our church. There's a massive difference in the story that I've told you. In social mobility, a massive difference in wealth. There's diversity. There's migration. There's globalisation. There's gentrification. This is my urban landscape. I'm sure you have your own. There's a tree in it as well, so, you know, it's there's two trees. Um, so there's a whole load of stuff going on for young people who live in the city. I've just outlined some of them. There's also a whole load of stuff 
going on for young people. Now, I'm just going to skim over. I, I asked um, two young people at the end of church on Sunday, what do they think the issues are that young people face? And this is the list they came up with. Um, education, aspiration, they felt like lack of aspiration, people didn't know what to do, bullying, unemployment, confusion, criminal activities, someone was stabbed um, just outside a parish, or last week died a young person um, in Dawson. Relationships, mental health, family, faith and identity. This is the list they came up with. So we've got living in the city, globalisation, um, diversity, migration, gentrification, then we've got the issues that young people face just growing up, just being a young person. And it's a bit like Double Dutch. Let me play you this video. Ready, we get like we get anxiety just watching it um it's a bit like double dutch um for young people there's this uh, one rope being living in the city and the other rope being a young person and these ropes keep coming around keep coming around and they're du and they're, and they're concentrating really hard in what they're doing to to skip the skip the ropes um and so it's a challenge but it's also amazing that so many young people are so creative, so joyful, so engaged um, and beautiful that get through this every day uh, and navigate, this, navigate all of the things that they navigate and come out the other side of it. And I love watching that and I'm massively inspired by the young people we meet. I um, want to play you a piece of music now. Um, it's by an artist called Getz. Um, it's on his album Ghetto Gospel. It was from last year. I'm going to play it and then I'm going to just go through a few thoughts that I have around what it teaches us about young people in the city. Um, here we go. I love some of the lines that Getz uh, creates ducking phone calls from the past that are fighting my demons, my karma. My brothers are smoking like the rasters. Witch doctors spoken with an omen. Young people in the city pick and mix faith in a way that is different in 2019. They pick and mix um, and play with faith in a way that we don't necessarily feel comfortable with as a church. I had a conversation with a young man um, and he described himself as Muslim, Bangladeshi, British, Christian and young. He speaks Spalletti, uh, Spalletti, um, mainly at home, in English with his friends, but he mixes his Spalletti and his English. Um, sometimes his white friends use Spalletti. They also use Somalian swear words. He's his main translator for his parents at home. He watches English football, played by foreign players. He likes eating chicken originating from southern U USA, but he's never left Poplar. So the world is in his, on his step, on his, in his street, yet he mixes all of this together. And young people mix faith, as Getz points out in, his, in, in that line, in those lines. I still leave my yard with a Rambo. Again, there's something about fear and safety. I was interested to hear about safety being a thing that young people um, are really concerned about and their own safety and safe places. Yet there's something about the local which is really important. So we talk all the time about young people being hyper-connected, that they've got the world in their hands. Yet there's something about the yard which is really important, something about the local, something about space and place which is super important to young people. 
It's interesting, there's also no correlation around my nan prays for me, but I still take out a knife, a Rambo. There's a sort of pick and mix. And he repeats lots of times, I want to know, I want to know, I want to know what's going on, I want to know where Biggie is. And there's something about the story that he tells us, which is really important that we listen to. And again, going back to listening to young people. Um, Amanda Hans in her book, um, Saying is Believing, talks about the importance of story. Life as we know it depends on stories. We are storied people. People were not just, be, just, not just describing the past. People were being changed as they spoke. This kind of construction was not just present for the speaker. Those of us receiving the testimony were also being formed. There's something in the learning um, of the stories of young people that is super important. And it's not about old school testimony. This is some sort of um, Damascus Road thing more of a Emmaus Road type thing, where we talk about what, we, what was good. We talk about what we found, where we found goodness this week. And then maybe we look at, oh, did you feel your heart burning? There was Jesus. And I think it's really important that we ask young people stories for their stories of where goodness is. And we're prepared to learn from that. Um, but more than learn, are we prepared to be changed? Sam Wells in the Nazareth Manifesto says, this is the moment of Christian conversion, not just to see one's need of Jesus, but be willing to embrace him in the form in which he comes to us. Are we prepared to receive the healing and forgiveness and eternal life that comes through the person we couldn't have had, we couldn't believe had anything to give us? Again, are we prepared to not only learn, but are we prepared to find salvation and our conversion in those young people that we speak to and learn from. But there's a real challenge. I think that the line that Getz leaves us with is profound and hideous. <laughs> What's the point of the cross if the one on the cross is cross with me? What's the point of the cross if the one on the cross is cross with me? I think this tells us a lot more about us than it does about Getz. What messages has he received? What messages do young people receive that they're left with that as a narrative? And the challenge is, can we change it?